So in this video, I have an important update for you on the Texas Presser Freedom case, which aims to stop the NFA and ATS regulation of suppressors. So let's talk about what has happened. But real quick, before we jump into this video, I wanna ask you guys for a favor. If you enjoyed this 2A content and you wanted to get out to more people, please consider subscribing to the channel. Only about 60% of all my viewers are subscribed to the channel. So consider subscribing to the channel and that really does help to get this out to more people. As I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we will be discussing the Texas Suppressor Freedom lawsuit case, which aims to eliminate the NFA and ATF regulation of suppressors. The ATF is now trying to get this case completely thrown out of the Fifth Circuit by arguing that a positive ruling in the Fifth Circuit will cause the improper circumvention of people like you and me paying a required NFA tax. The case we're gonna be talking about in this video is a case we've covered before and it's the Paxton v. Dettelbach case. This is an important lawsuit that was decided by a lower court, a district court judge back in July, and it was decided on cross motions for summary judgment. In July, that federal district court, that lower court issued an order granting the ATS motion for summary judgment because the judge believed the plaintiffs in this case and the state of Texas lack standing to bring this lawsuit against the ATF. In response to that, the state of Texas quickly filed an appeal of that ruling and it went up to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, who is now set to review this suppressor case. But now the ATF is trying to argue that the NFA's tax requirement bars this case from proceeding forward in the Fifth Circuit level, in the appeals level, and that the Fifth Circuit should agree with the lower court that a dismissal is proper and they should throw this case out. But while making these recent arguments in the Fifth Circuit, the ATF made a huge mistake. They lean too heavily on this tax argument and the Second Amendment arguments, and therefore those arguments have been exposed by the state of Texas. And I think this case is now set to proceed forward at the Fifth Circuit because those arguments have been completely invalidated. The ATF recently submitted their brief arguing that the Fifth Circuit should uphold the dismissal of the case. And also they argue that the Fifth Circuit does not need to hear oral arguments in this case at all. And in their brief, the ATF once again tries to argue that as accessories, suppressors are not bearable arms protected by the Second Amendment. The ATF also argues that the required NFA tax makes this lawsuit invalid. But the plaintiffs just exposed those arguments pointing out that the tax issue that the ATF is pointing to is 100% irrelevant to this case and is not required for this case to proceed forward at the Fifth Circuit level. Now, for those not aware, this lawsuit arises out of Texas House Bill 957. HB 957 aimed to exempt from federal regulation all suppressors that are made in and remain within the state of Texas. The claim behind this law is that since these items, since these suppressors are made and sold exclusively within the state of Texas, they do not fall under interstate commerce and therefore they fall outside the purview and regulation of the ATF. Now, after Texas passed this law, the ATF then sent out a warning letter threatening that they will in fact still enforce the NFA and GCA's regulations against these made in Texas suppressors. So don't go thinking that you can just do whatever you want in the state of Texas. The ATF is still actively enforcing the NFA against these made in Texas suppressors. Now, in response to this, Texas, along with individual plaintiffs, filed a lawsuit against the government. This case was then submitted to a federal district court and it was submitted to that court for cross motions for summary judgment. And then after reviewing those cross motions, ultimately what that lower court judge did is he granted the motion in favor of the ATF and the government. The court ruled in favor of the government under the rationale that the plaintiffs and also the state of Texas lack standing to bring this lawsuit. On review, the judge here found that the plaintiffs have not suffered an injury in fact, and therefore they have no standing. The judge essentially stated that the individual plaintiffs would have to allege that they possess either an illegal silencer or that they engage in some sort of other prohibited conduct that the ATF is claiming is illegal. The court also claimed that the plaintiffs could show standing through evidence that maybe they have been directly threatened by the ATF, or they would have to show that they tried to go through the process and that they were either approved or denied under the law. And then finally, the lower court found that Texas itself as a state did not have standing to sue on behalf of their residents. And based on all that, the judge granted the ATF and the government's motion for summary judgment and dismissed the case in favor of the ATF, finding that the plaintiffs lacked standing. Now, in response, Texas has asked the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals to reverse that lower court decision, reverse that dismissal, and allow the case to proceed forward in the lower court. The ATF responded to this appeal and argued that the Fifth Circuit, that they should essentially affirm the lower court's dismissal, and in fact, that the Fifth Circuit should not even hold or arguments in this case. The ATF argued that under the Tax Anti-Injunction Act, or the AIA, this lawsuit was improper since it would result in the avoidance of paying a required tax under the NFA. 
the ATF is using taxes as a way to try to get out of this case. It's an argument they brought in the lower court and now they're using it once again in the Fifth Circuit. Interestingly, they also claim that the average registration process time for a suppressor, according to them, is only 70 days. They claim that that type of delay is not long enough. It's not an injury enough to actually bring a lawsuit like this. They said that, you know, to bring a lawsuit, this specific case would take longer and did take longer than just the 70 day processing time. Now, I find that very interesting because I know a lot of you guys who apply for suppressors know that the average processing time and response time is much longer than 70 days, but that is what the ATF is claiming. Then the ATF goes on to argue that the Second Amendment is not implicated at all when it comes to suppressors. They state in their brief that the Second Amendment's protection extends only to instruments that constitute bearable arms and that are typically possessed by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes. Because the Second Amendment covers only bearable arms, laws that regulate firearms accessories or attachments do not necessarily implicate its protections. And a silencer is a firearm accessory. It's not a weapon in itself. In their brief, the ATF makes two main arguments for why this case should be thrown out. First, they argue that the NFA's tax requirement implicates the AIA, and therefore this lawsuit is invalid and should not proceed forward. And also they continue to argue and double down on their position that suppressors are merely accessories and therefore not afforded protections by the Second Amendment. That, of course, runs directly contrary to what the ATF and the NFA actually does in regards to the regulation of suppressors. They actually treat them as firearms. They regulate them as actual firearms. But the ATF wants the court here once again to forget that fact. Now, in response, Texas completely obliterated these absurd arguments in their new brief. First, Texas points out that the tax issue is not even at issue. It's not even really relevant to what is going on right now at the Fifth Circuit level. Texas argues that this issue is not before the court. The parties extensively briefed this issue below. Appellants noted that only one of their four claims implicated the Tax Anti-Injunction Act, and that exceptions applied even to that claim. However, the district court did not rule on the Tax Anti-Injunction Act or even acknowledge the issue in its order of dismissal, nor was it required to. Instead, it decided only on standing and only the injury in fact prong of standing. They go on to say that this court should not consider the party's Anti-Injunction Act arguments. The district court should consider them on remand. What Texas is pointing out here is that this appeal is only about standing. The lower court dismissed the case because it believed the plaintiffs and the state of Texas lack standing to bring this lawsuit. The main basis for that was the court said that neither the plaintiffs nor Texas had an injury in fact to meet the standing requirement. The court did not consider the AIA. It did not rule on the AIA. So the ATF now throwing this in and claiming that the lower court decided on the AIA is not correct and it's a huge mistake and it's not going to support the Fifth Circuit denying review in this case. Then Texas goes on to make a really important and strong argument. They point out that the Supreme Court's recent 63 decision in Bruin, which struck down New York's concealed carry processing scheme, is actually support for why Texas and the plaintiffs here have standing in this case to challenge the NFA and the process that are required to register suppressors. They argue in the brief that post Bruin, whether citizens may challenge requirements to apply for permission to exercise Second Amendment rights is an open question. Although the ATF cites these opinions as controlling authority for this argument, it saves this argument for last, surely because it recognizes the shaky status of these opinions post Bruin. Here, Texas is directly using the Bruin decision to point out that post Bruin, they have the ability to challenge application processes that serve as a barrier to the exercise of the Second Amendment and your right to keep and bear arms. That is exactly what is being challenged here in this lawsuit. And therefore, the lower court dismissing this case for a lack of standing also directly violates what the Supreme Court said in Bruin. Here, there is a challenge to the interface process. Bruin allows a challenge and it questions these types of processes and barriers to the exercise of your right to keep and bear arms. And so this case should not have been thrown out. So this is definitely an important case, an important appeal going forward. I know a lot of you guys in Texas, a lot of my Texas viewers are very interested in the outcome of this case. But again, I want to remind everyone that as of right now, the ATF still treats these items as regulated and they've sent out multiple letters notifying people that they will still prosecute you for violating the NFA. So again, Hopefully the Fifth Circuit steps in. Hopefully we get a pro to a win. But I encourage you guys, if you're in Texas, make sure you wait for this kind of to play out. Wait for this case to go through the process. And if we get any more information, if anything else changes, I will let you guys know. Also, if you like this video and you like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. 
All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of 2 news. But as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this nation was built by Arm Scholars and this nation will be maintained by Arm Scholars.